Hello everyone and welcome. This video is part of the Twisted Sisters YouTube hop. So the CTMH Twisted Sisters are close to my heart consultants that get together when a new catalogue launches. We take something from the catalogue, we all pick something different, twist it into a use that you might not have already thought of. So you can see I have the July stamp of the month. Now you can purchase it for $35.50 if you just want to make a single purchase. But why would you want to do that if you are a VIP and you place an $80 order in Australia, you can add it to your cart for free. If you're a regular customer and you have an $80 order, you can add it to your cart for just $9. So the reason why it is this price is because it is like a D size stamp. It's got a lot of images on here. And what I want to do today is use this B and I'm going to use some of the other elements on there. But instead of making a card or a scrapbook page, I'm actually going to do an art journal page. I haven't done an art journal page on video for quite some time and as soon as I saw this B and all the delicate images and everything that are included with this I knew that I wanted to do an art journal page. I am going to bring in some other items from this July to August catalogue so this is currently available right now. I'm probably going to use this stamp here it's from the Cape Cod card making workshop. I love the texture in this. I bought this primarily because I loved the thin cuts or the dies that come with this but this texture stamp is also going to be extremely useful. I'm going to be using setting the scene because I want to build up some layers on my art journal page and I'm also probably going to bring in background elements for some splatters and things like that and I think what I'm going to do is use some of this Dina Wakeley gloss spray, the fuchsia and the turquoise for the background colors and all of my art journal pages are using a very heavyweight cardstock so I've used the Distress Watercolor cardstock and I do six by eight sizes. I'm going to put a little bit of the turquoise in certain areas. I know I can go back in and be a little bit more heavy handed after it's dried and put a few more layers in there. To dry it off a little bit quicker I can use my heat gun so I'm just going to do that or you can set it aside to dry. Now I'm going to spray some of the fuchsia now I'm wanting to cover this quite a bit, but if you just spray this down a little bit, you'll get these gorgeous splatters as well. But I can add those in again later. I love the vividness of the fuchsia. So my aim is to cover all of this paper. If it's quite wet, you can pick it up and tap it. And if you've got a lot of ink on there, you can make it run. And if you use your heat tool, it's a little bit hard to film this. See how I'm getting the dribbles going down there? So if you apply the heat tool, hold it up like this and aim at those really wet pieces, you'll get some very cool dribbles. I'm gonna come back in with the turquoise. And I'm holding this further away so that I get more of a spray and a coverage. So you can see by holding it further away, it's going to spray out further across all this piece of paper. So I'm just adding in layers and then I know that I can bring in more of this later. So I need more of the fuchsia. I'm going to do the same thing in roughly the same areas that I did before. And just lay that up until I'm really happy with the colours and that I've got a good coverage over it all. And this is why you really need to use a spray box and put something behind it as well if you're using a close to my heart pizza type box. You might have noticed while I was working on this that the spray nozzle actually stopped working with the turquoise. So I went away, I unscrewed this, ran hot water through it and then I had a glass of water and I tried to use the sprayer and it was spraying out a little bit but it has gunked up again. So I need to put a skewer down inside here and remove some of the paint that's stuck inside this straw piece here. So instead of trying to get that to work, because I want to finish this piece off, I have poured a little bit of this turquoise gloss spray into my little palette here. And what I'm going to do is actually, I've loaded up my fan brush and I'm just going to splatter some of this on here with the fan brush. And you can see that's giving some gorgeous rich color and I'm really loving how that looks. So I'm quite happy with the end result, even though that got clogged a little bit. 
it's not really bothering me at all because I'm getting this gorgeous effect. And then I'm gonna bring in the fuchsia and do exactly the same thing. But I love how this is looking. And rather than wasting this, I'm gonna put this one aside. And I've got a panel here that I could use as a card front. So I'm just gonna have a little experiment and actually just apply this direct to the piece of paper. And this is looking rather cool. So this is what you can do. You don't have to do sprays. You don't have to do flicks. You can actually paint with this. I've just got my pickle jar here off to the side so I can clear off my brush. I'm gonna move this one away to dry. Unscrew my fuchsia and just pour a little bit. You don't need much into here. And then I'm bringing in the art journal piece that I was working on. I'm just drying my brush off a little bit with some paper towel. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. I'm gonna bring this in and splatter some of this color, especially over the top of the areas where the white's showing through. I actually don't mind the white too much, but I think it's rather cool to have multiple layers of the splatters and multiple layers of this paint. Take this one out and bring my other piece in. This hasn't dried yet, so I'm just gonna dry this off a little bit. So this one's my little bonus piece. I really hadn't decided that I was going to do this at all, but I'm just gonna add a little bit more paint to it. And I don't know if a fan brush is really the right sort of brush to use with this, but I sort of love the streaks that are happening with this. So this is all just a little bit of an experiment. And yes, I'm doing the experimenting while I'm recording. So I haven't actually tried that before. Usually I do all my experimenting before I get on and make a recording. But I really quite love how this is looking. So I'm gonna dry this one off and then I'm gonna do some more flicks with this. Normally when I'm painting onto a piece, I use a wide brush like this so that it's a little bit smoother. But I think I'm just gonna keep going with the fan brush and experimenting with this one. So I know that looks all a bit like a bit of a hot mess at the moment, but I really love the colors that are coming out. And so while I was doing all of that, this one hasn't quite dried and I've picked it up and I'm getting some drips as well, which I really, really love. So I'm just moving that around to make more of the drips as more texture on the base of this. So all I need to do now is wait for all of this to dry and I can get on to stamping my bee and coloring that in and then building up layers on top of this piece here to make my art journal page. I left this to dry overnight because it was getting a little bit late. So I thought I would finish this off today, but you can see how the gloss sprays gives all this beautiful shine to it and all the layers have built up. And I really think this is just so, so pretty. So I'm hoping you can see all the colors and the texture and everything that is shining through with this. Now, because this is an art journal page, I usually like to ink up the edges and this is gloss spray. So it's like a paint with gloss in it. Now I'm gonna go around the edges with archival black ink because I know that that will play nicely with this glossy surface. Bring in a white piece of paper here so that you can see. There is a good depth with this. Now you could blend this in or you could just go around the edges like I'm doing. If you wanted more depth around the edges, you could blend it into the mat. And you can see some of the sponges coming off here. So it's always good when you're sponging to do this over a surface, not a project that you've got there. So you can just shake those bits off. Sometimes I forget about that. You can see a big bit just came off then. I just need to replace this sponge here on my tool. But if I was inking edges of things on top of a scrapbook layout that was down here, all this black would be going on here and I'm not guaranteed to be able to get that all off without it leaving a mark. And I don't know if you can see, there are a couple of little marks there. So whenever you're inking up edges with sponging tools, they do deteriorate over time. So make sure you do it over a surface that it doesn't matter if you get some ink on it. Off camera, I colored in the bee and the hive here and I've used tri-blend markers. I'll just bring in the colors so that I can show you. I've got orange blend, pink violet blend, citrus blend and alpine green blend. For the alpine green blend, I only used the light side because I wanted a vibrant green and it's quite a good green to have for leaves and things when you're working with oranges and purples. The citrus blend, I used the light and the dark and the same with the pink violet blend, I used the dark and light 
And the same with the orange blend. I used the dark and the light. I didn't use the mid-tones in any of the markers. So I'm just going to have a little play with this before I do some stamping on the background. So I've got my stamps all adhered to blocks and that will add some great effects on the background. So I'm just going to try and work out which way I'm going to have this because two of the images that I'm using have a definite right way up. So this floral border, of course, I want that to appear in the right orientation. And this script here is from the set that I showed earlier, setting the scene. And I just want to make sure that I get the right orientation so I don't have my words upside down. Now, anything that you're seeing me do on this six by eight art journal page can also be done on a scrapbook layout. You can do this on any size, a six by eight, an eight and a half by 11, or a 12 by 12. You can do this same sort of thing on those pages. But I think creating an art journal page for me, it's just a whole lot of fun. I'm not worrying too much about what photos are going to go with everything and I really enjoy the whole process of making a mixed media background. I know I could use gesso on White Daisy and then I could use that as a scrapbook layout but if I tried to put all of this onto a White Daisy piece without it being treated it wouldn't hold up to it. So the first thing I'm going to do, I think I'm going to stick with this orientation here, is stamp some florals across the bottom edge. I'm just going to make sure that that is stamping up okay and I'm just hoping that I don't get my head in the way. Now with the archival black ink you want to go straight down and straight up. You don't want to move it around a little bit because this is a bit of a smoother surface than just a piece of cardstock. I'm going to stamp this little border all the way across the bottom and you can see it did move a little bit but then I'm just standing here waiting for the ink to apply onto the paper. So you do want to take a little bit of time when you're doing something like this to make sure that the ink transfers onto the paper. And with archival ink, you do want to clean it off pretty much straight away, but it will stain your stamps a little bit. It doesn't mean they can't be used with other colors at all, but you will get a bit of a black outline with archival ink. That's just the nature of it. The next stamp I'm going to put on here is this text stamp. So I'm just inking this up and I'm going to run this around some of the edges and even though this is a fairly dark background I'm still going to get the text coming through. So the places I'm going to concentrate doing this the most are over the turquoise colour here because that's where it's going to show out the most. And then I'm going to put a little bit off to the edge. So it sort of isn't the whole complete stamp every time I do this. I'm going to run this, I think, all the way up the edge. So I'm only going to have just a little bit of this text. And the next one I do is going to come off to the edge here. I love that we're introducing more sets like this. And also this one as well. They really lend themselves well to art journaling. This side I'm only going to go to here. This side I'm going to finish off the edge because it's so close to the top, I feel like I need to put something at the top as well. And I know I showed you these two stamp sets at the beginning of the video. I'm just putting those aside for now because I think I'm going to have enough with the images of these florals and this little honeycomb type piece here, the hexagon piece that almost looks like a flower. You could make that into a customized flower and this little hexagon piece here as well. So I'm going to ink up all those pieces and just start stamping them over the top of where my word pieces are. Some of them are going to go off the edge. I'm going to make sure that I put some up in this area up here because I'm going to do a little cluster of these elements. And you really do need to go straight up and down. Try not to rush it too much. I was a little bit quick with that one and that one smooshed out a little bit. This is quite smooth, so it is quite easy to have the stamp move around on you a little bit. Then I've got an even smaller floral and I've got the honeycomb piece. So what I'm going to do is lay that over top of some of these areas of these florals. And I do love having stamped elements coming in off the edge of things. It makes it look like a total complete piece rather than having everything smushed into the insides. I can always add more of these images after I put the bee and the hive down. 
Now I'm hardly pressing down at all for this little delicate floral piece. It's just a light touch. And I'm going with clusters of elements here. And there is drying time involved with the archival ink onto this surface. And I've built up quite a lot of layers. So I am being particularly careful that I don't mess up what I've prepared with this gorgeous background here. And then I've got this tiny little hexagon dot as well. Now I am going to bring in some white onto this page, but not until I've pretty much got everything all done. Usually when I do this sort of thing, I do first and second generation stamping, but this is quite a dark background, so the second generation stamping is not going to show too much. I've adhered the hive and two of these elements here with liquid glue. Pop this one up on foam tape. The main part of the bee is popped up on foam tape and then I've just put a little bit of glue on the extreme little pieces here and held those down so that they attach so that when I'm going through my book these pieces don't get caught on anything else. So I just need to trim off these edges and because I'm trimming the edges off that means there's going to be a little bit of water white and color at the edge so then I'll need to bring in my archival ink again because I want this to match this edge here so I'm just going to open that and ink up these little areas so that they blend in with the rest of the outside of the edges and I think you can agree that does make all the difference so now I just need to do it to this part as well and I do love how this looks. This just, making something like this just makes me really, really happy. I enjoy the whole entire process. It's just playing with textures and colors and different mediums that I don't necessarily use all the time when I'm doing my scrapbook layouts. And I think what I'm gonna do with this panel here is to replicate this somewhat to make a card. So I'll probably post the finished result of this on Instagram or on my Facebook page. But now what I need to do for this, I'm actually going to take this Versamat away so you can see it a little bit better. I do need to put a little sentiment type thing with this. Now sometimes I think of something myself to put on but this stamp set here has a sentiment celebrate every moment and I think that's actually perfect for an art journal page. So I'm going to trim this down. So while I'm adhering this I just want to mention that I'll have a link to all the things that I've used below if they're available and also check out the playlist link below where you'll be able to click on that and see what all of the other girls are doing for the first few days of June here. Some of them have already gone ahead of me. I think there are a couple to come behind me so don't miss out on those. They think of some great ideas to use product in a way that you might not have thought of. So I'm just bringing in my black journaling pen and I'm going in a sketch type motion. I don't want this to be totally perfect. I'm not trying to draw a straight line at all. So just back and forth over that and then I'm going to do that around the outside of this as well just to create a little bit more depth. And I haven't forgotten about the white. I am going to bring in of course some white splatters. I do like how doing this makes the sentiment really stand out. I love the brightness of this. I think the colouring has worked really, really well. I didn't film it on camera because it did take quite some time to do, but I have used the orange and the yellow blends together to form this part of the bee's body here and also the hive. I've started off with the dark on the outside of the orange, the lighter with the orange, and I've only done a little section at a time, especially with this because you don't want the ink to dry. So my tip would be, just to do two sections at a time. Do the dark of the orange if you want to replicate this, then the light, then bring in the light of the citrus blend and then blend everything in and make it look a little bit sketchy. It doesn't have to be perfect blend for this. I do like how there is so much light and shade to this with the ink all merging together and that's why you only want to do one little section at a time because you want the Spectrum Noir alcohol markers or any markers that you use, you want that ink to stay wet so that you do get this effect. And the other thing that I wanted to mention, this is quite black this section here. When I stamped them I couldn't quite get the perfect result with this so I just brought in my black Spectrum Noir marker and just coloured this section in just to give it a nice rich look. 
I'm bringing in the Dina Wakeley gloss spray in the white and I'm just going to do some splatters but I'm going to mask off the body of the bee. I really don't want this section to have ink on it at all and just mask off these areas a little bit. I don't mind if it goes on the floral elements, but I don't want it to go on those black pieces. And then I'm going to do the same here. Just mask that off just a little bit. You can see how beautifully crisp and white this is because all of this is completely dry. So just a few of these, just to go onto the piece there, just to add a little bit of light and shade to this with the white splatters. So there's my finished piece, ready to set aside to dry. I just need to wait for those white gloss speckles to dry. But what I normally do when I create an art journal piece, I usually put it up near my computer so that I can look at it for a little while before I put it away in an album. Making layers of paint and then stamping on top of that and putting in some stamped images, it just makes me happy to create something like this. And I need to remind myself to do this more often. I'll put links below too to more of the art journal videos that I've done. I think I have three of them all together on my YouTube channel. If you'd like to see me do more of this type of project, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, happy crafting and bye for now.